Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And to those who have wished me a happy Mother's Day, thank you so much. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones. I am apostle of the House That Dignity Built Ministries. And we are powered by the Dignity and Direction Group. It's a nonprofit organization that exposes resources for those of you interested in education, employment, entrepreneurship, and civic engagement. All right. Okay. So this is Second Sunday. And so I have a sermon message for you. Um, and this is our Dignity's Hour of Power. And I am so glad to be able to come to you with today's message uh, because each time I am teaching and preaching, I am learning so much more about what the Bible really says. Uh, all it takes is for us to dig a little deeper so that we can have uh, contextual meaning of what's going on um, in God's word. And that brings us closer to Jesus since Jesus is the living word. And when we are connected to the word, we are connected uh, to Jesus, our savior, our Lord and savior. Uh, let us go to prayer and prayer together. Father God, thank you so much for this day. It is a blessing that I don't take for granted to be a mother I remember praying to you, asking you when you would give me a child, and you did. And I am so grateful for this opportunity. I'm, I, it has taught me so much, uh, so much about life, so much about love, and even about my relationship with you as a parent, as a friend. Uh, so thank you, Father God, for that. It's, it's also taught me about my own parents, the kind of love that they have for me because I was able to see the kind of love I have for my daughter. Uh, so thank you for that favor, Father God. Thank you for that favor. Uh, to be a mother is an awesome, awesome experience, Father God. Uh, we ask that you uh, forgive us for our sins, those that we know about, those we don't know about, Father God. Um, thank you so much for the new mercies that you show us day by day as we work on our journey. Thank you for not asking us to be perfect, but to be perfected in you, for you are perfect. Um, and so that takes a load off our minds that we don't have to be perfect, but we do have to admit that you are the father, that this earth is yours, that all riches are yours, uh, that we belong to you. Um, we believe in the Holy Trinity, Father God, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know that you provide. We know that you save. We know that you comfort. Um, so thank you for that, Lord God. And we offer this prayer to you through our precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for going with me to the Father um, to offer up that prayer. He knows my name. And this song is about you. He knows my name. And I'm so glad about this. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh, and oh, how he walks with me. Oh, oh how he talks with me. Oh, and oh, how he tells me. <laughs> that I am his own. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, you know my name. Hallelujah, you know my name. Oh, and oh, how you comfort me. Hey, oh, how you counsel me. Oh, 
and it's so amazing that I am your friend. Oh, 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 oh. and so now I pour out my heart to you. Here in your presence, I am made new. Oh, you know my name. Oh, you know my name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We are so glad to know your name. We're so glad to know your name. Well, today's message is called All the King's Men. It's called All the King's Men. And again, this is a message that is built by the scripture uh, that God revealed to us uh, from May's prayer. So uh, the three scriptures that we introduced on our video uh, for the prayer for the month of May, you will um, hear in today's message, all right? Uh, so it just comes from the Holy Spirit. We're just asking the Holy Spirit which scriptures to use for the sermons for this month and for the prayers for this month. Uh, and that way, this message is for you. It's from the Spirit straight to you, all right? All the King's men. Noah was not the only person in the Bible who made a decision while drunk. I want to say that again. Noah was not the only person in the Bible who made a drunken decision. King Xerxes from the book of Esther, which is known as the Cinderella book of the Bible, made a bad decision as well while he was under the influence. Now, this sermon exposes his mistake and the men who helped him to make it. So let's go to Esther chapter one, and we'll look at the verses seven through 12. And it reads, wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits, that means he was really drunk, from wine, he commanded the seven eunuchs or chamberlains who served him, Mehuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bikthah, Abakthah, Zethar, and Carcass, to bring before him Queen Vashti, wearing her royal crown, in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Now already we have a problem. King Xerxes was drunk and his eunuchs might have been drinking as well. And it is interesting to see the meaning of the names of the eunuchs because one can infer 
that they might live in the meaning of their names since names have power. And we know that to be because as we study about Jacob um, and the names of all of his children, first their mothers named them and each of the names had a meaning for the mothers. Then their fathers gave them a blessing and their names were changed. And then Moses gave them a blessing, right? And that, that blessing told them how they would work in the ministry. So our names, we our names can change up to three times based upon parents and based upon a prophet who blesses our walk, all right? So let's examine the names, the meanings of the names, uh, first of the eunuchs who served King Xerxes. Mahuman means to make an uproar. Bista means a weak person. Arbona means his destruction. Bigtha means gift of fortune. Abakha means father of the wine press. Zethar means he that examines or beholds. And carcass means the body of a slaughtered animal. When Xerxes sent for Queen Vashti via the eunuchs, he sent an uproarious person, a weak person, a destructive person, one who might be drunk, and one who represents a slaughtered animal. These individuals outnumbered the two eunuchs whose names represented fortune and examination. So unless these two eunuchs had large personalities, they were probably overpowered by the others who possessed negative names. Now, one cannot completely blame the eunuchs for their behavior because they might still be affected by becoming guardians of the bed. The process of becoming a eunuch is that they are young men who are kidnapped from their families by war or by a king's choice. Once the men are captured, they are castrated by the removal of and are cutting off their reproductive organs. After the castration, they serve as courtiers or equivalent domestics. They serve for espionage or clandestine operations. They can perform as castrato singers who have high voices. They serve as concubines or sexual partners, religious specialists, soldiers, royal guards, government officials, and guardians of women or harem servants. Possibly these eunuchs suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, from being forced to serve, losing their masculinity and their freedom. When we are sick, Philippians 2 and 26 promises, for he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Now, this is Apostle Paul letting fellow believers know that he does not want them to worry about his being ill. He believes that God will heal him because he has faith in God's grace, which he knows is sufficient. The eunuchs did not know they had God's grace and power. Proverbs 14 and 27 could have helped them as well. It reads, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. The eunuchs would have known that God keeps us from eternal death, even if part of our lives appears to have died. God does not love them any less after their castration. His love is unconditional. Part of the reason that eunuchs can feel disenfranchised is because they did not have any control or choice in their situation. They did not have the chance to determine where they should go. And even King David at times in his life would ask for directions for where to go. 
In 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1, it reads, In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? He asked. The Lord said, Go up. David asked, Where should I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. It should not have been too late for the eunuchs to ask God where to go to be healed, since God is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. In addition to working with eunuchs who appear to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, Xerxes was surrounded by another group of men who appeared to suffer from too much privilege. Xerxes consulted with them about what to do about Vashti's refusal to appear to him before all of the drunken men of the city. In Esther chapter 1, verses 13 through 20, one can see their dialogue. And it, be, and it reads, since it was customary for the king to consult experts in matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king. They are Karshena, Shethar, Athmata, Tarshish, Meres, Marsena, and Mamukin. The seven nobles of Persia and Medea who had special access to the king and they were the highest in the kingdom. According to law, what must be done to Queen Vashti, he asked. She has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the eunuchs have taken to her. Then Mamukin replied in the presence of the king and the nobles, Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and the peoples for all the provinces of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will become known to all the women. And so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Median women of nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Medea, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then, when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all of his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. Now, these seven men were like uh, the U.S. presidential cabinet, which is composed of the vice president and the secretaries of state, treasury, defense, the attorney general, the interior, right, of all of those departments where the leaders of those departments report to the president. Their names mean this. Here are the meanings of their names. Karshena means a sleeping lamb. Shethar means putrefied or dying. Athmatha means a cloud of death. Tarnish means to lose luster. Meres means lofty or defluxion. And defluxion is like having an abscess on one's body where there's tissue and it's filled with liquid, like an abscess, it's like an abscess. Marcena means bitterness of a bramble, like a prickly bush. And mamukin means impoverished to make poor, but it also means certainty and truth. I find that to be ironic with his name. He can actually 
be good. He could live up to the best part of his name if he cho had chosen to do so. He just hadn't chosen to do so. Their name meanings remind me a bit of the names of the uh, seven small people from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, like Dopey and Happy and Sneezy and Grumpy. <laughs> Now, these, uh, if you look at the types of advisors that a king or a queen would need, these types would be legal and financial. They might be spiritual, educational, or psychological, or in the business realm. And attributes of an advisor could be the following, uh, for them to be disciplined, mature, to have sound judgment, uh, to um, have an initiative, uh, to be cool under pressure, have tolerance for ambiguity, to be open-minded, to be empathetic or situationally aware, or patient or morally straight. But how could they serve wisely if they were all full of wine? How would they have been able to help Xerxes to make a sound decision? So while they were selected to serve wisely, their decision for Vashti appears to be subjective, especially since they stated that by disagreeing with her husband, she was causing a problem for everyone in the city. Everyone in the city. That seems to be a subjective argument. And so I ask you, who is in your ear? Is it someone who is suffering from illness or from pride or from intoxication of some type? So instead, when you are advised by a human being, also pass the question to the father so that he can vet that information. He can convict the spirit. He can confirm right? What you've heard before you act upon it. If we had listened and had known the meanings of these names over the centuries as we practice Judaism and Christianity, I would say to you there would have been fewer abused wives who were just thrown away for speaking their truth. Right? I'm going to say that again. If we had known the meanings of these names and had paid attention to Xerxes having been drunk for seven straight days, I think many of us would have known sooner that the wife is to be treated with respect. The wife is to be treated with love. Remember the word says that husbands are to love their wives the way Christ loves the church. And for a wife to not want to be in the presence of all of the drunken men in the city was her using discretion. That was not about her trying to embarrass her husband. That was about her trying to be safe and not having to obey a drunken husband who is under the influence. That's just something to think about as you move forward. So as you, um, as mothers, as fathers, as husbands, as wives, think about your marriages and think about how you're going to talk to your children about marriage. Preferably, this message will be a blessing to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, if this message was a blessing to you, I, I ask you that you would consider uh, subscribing to our uh, YouTube channel. It's Dainty G. Jones. We would love to have you to be a part of our international ministry. We have subscribers from across the globe, and that's the beauty of um, having a YouTube channel. We also, if you're interested in having your own YouTube channel and you don't know how to start, we also have a video on this channel that shows you how to start your own YouTube channel. I pray, I pray 
uh, that your life be blessed, that your life be productive, that your life have purpose, that if you are suffering from depression, that it cease, that you are suffering from abuse, that it cease, that you practice self-care and awareness, that you love yourself harder than you ever have before, because when you do that, you are loving the Holy Spirit who resides within your temple. You can be a part of our ministry or any other ministry that loves the truth of the word, not oppression that is created from misinterpretation of the word, but the truth and the light and the joy of the word. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones, Apostle of the House That Dignity Build Ministries. Blessings, blessings, blessings.